What's going on guys? Welcome back to Your Late Fort Guide. Hey, tonight we're going to do a live episode of the Guides Network and we are going to discuss how to catch giant bass using swim baits on a budget. So we're going to break down all the ways, you know, swim baits are great right now starting in the fall we're kind of in the peak of the fall swim bait bite period right now but man that carries forward winter is a very underrated time of year to throw swim baits and then of course going into spring when fish get shallow in the spring we all know swim baits are great then as well so you've really got kind of two-thirds to three-quarters of the year here ahead of us starting right now where swim baits can be really effective from big to small and so tonight what i thought we would do is break down all the different ways that you can go about catching swim baits, what swim baits to use, what areas to throw them in, what gear you need to throw it, how to retrieve them, all the different tips and tricks of the trade to get your big bass on your big baits throughout this time of year. Hey, thank you guys. First of all, before we get started, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, the feedback that we got on a video that we did Monday has just been unbelievable. Uh, it was a very personal subject. It was a very tough one to discuss. And the overwhelming positivity and support that I have received through the comment section has been, there, there's just not any words for me to even say how awesome that has been. So I've said this for a long time, but you guys just continue to make it prove me right, so to speak, in this way. Uh, we do not have the biggest audience on this channel. We for sure, without a doubt, have the best. And that's a credit to each and every one of you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of this Year Lake Fort Guide community, man. I am so proud of what we've built over the years here and the type of community we have in a social media world where it's it's hard to keep things on the up and up. It's real easy to get lost in the negative and, and receive a bunch of the negative through the community in the comment section. And man, we just really don't have that here because th this crowd that, that follows what we do here is just unbelievable. So thank you guys so much for being who y'all are and, and being a part of, of my journey. Uh, and really providing me an avenue to travel down through this journey. So uh, thank you guys so much. That being said, cheers to y'all, man. You guys rock. This this cheers right here is for each and every one of you. Thank you guys. Hey, as you join us, this is a live stream. We've been doing a few more of these live discussions lately. They seem to be going over well. They're get, we're getting good feedback on those. We're getting good views on those. So we're going to try and do an instructional tonight live like we told you. Hey, you know the deal on live streams. We appreciate you guys watching. When you get in here, if you enjoy them, continue to hit those thumbs up for us. Let us know that you're liking them. Also, drop us a comment so uh, we know who we're talking to in the chat. As we get through this deal today and you guys have questions, especially towards the end, I'll be able to really pay more attention to the questions. But pop your questions in there. I want to answer as many as I can. I think this will be, you know, doing it live, this will be an added bonus for us to give you an instructional content like we have in the past but instead of doing an edited version and doing it live we'll be able to answer your questions right there live on the spot at the end of the discussion so pop those in especially towards the end and of course if you don't mind we sure would appreciate it if you would share this video man sharing helps us more than anything else you guys can do for us as far as post interaction so share this video any way you can we'll sure appreciate it let me say some quick hellos and how you doing to the early guys in the chat tonight guys and gals we got John Hotson, we got Landon Moses, Big John's in the house, James Clifton, Gabe Real, Dustin Sperling, Rocky Shoe, Adam Martinez, Big C, Brad Lamar, Express Jack, Andrew Alphabet. Andrew, this one's for you, dog. You know you like this one. John Hodson, Southeast Bass and TV, JB, and John Dendy. Those are the early risers. There's more of you guys coming in as we speak. Mike Hall, Billy Snowman. Thank you guys, each and every one of y'all, so much. Hey, so the way we came about this topic tonight, I actually posted on Facebook today. If you guys don't, we would appreciate it if you could follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Your Lake Four Guide. I posted on Facebook today and basically asked you guys, the, the Your Lake Four Guide community, what topic would you like to discuss? The only topic that was mentioned twice was swim baits. Uh, so that's why we went with swim baits. It was there were several other good topics. There was chatter baits were requested. I would love to do maybe a live chatter bait guides network. Maybe next Wednesday when we do guides network, we can do a live chatter bait discussion. Renner, if you see this one tonight, I apologize for not getting to your topic. Uh, but we had two people request a swim bait deal, and so I thought that would be. The only fitting thing to do would be to go with the one topic that got two votes instead of different topics from everybody else and me just picking the one I like the best. So that's why we're doing swim baits. Like I said, guys, as we get into this fall period, which we're in now, man, these fish, they, they get so shad-centric, we'll call it. They get locked in on bait fish, and a swim bait is such a great way to represent a shad to a bass uh, in this art of bass fishing that we do. It's a really effective tool. Also, of course, big swim baits 
are just a tremendous, tremendous way to target your bigger than average bass. I know we all love doing that. That's what we're about on this channel. I personally love to fish like that. I'd rather catch one giant than 25 little ones. That's just kind of how I'm built, so to speak, when it comes to that. So I've always been very fond of big swim baits. I don't do it as much as I used to because when you're guiding or filming and trying to make sure you get bites for the camera, big swim baits ain't always conducive to that. Uh, if I was just going out randomly fishing for myself, I would certainly throw big swim baits a lot more than I do now. I used to throw them a lot more than I do now. Uh, but I still love doing it when I get a chance. When I get the opportunity and the time is right, I love to do it. I did do a lot of it in my in my previous, you know, in, in years back in my history. I've thrown a lot of big swim baits, so I have some knowledge, some personal experience on it. And I've been privileged enough to get some experience in a boat with some of the very best swim baiters in the state of Texas over the years. And they've taught me some cool tricks and tips and stuff. So I want to share that with you guys tonight. Now, one of the things that was specifically asked from the viewer, I believe it was John Sykes, who watches every video that we make. John, we appreciate you so much. But he wanted to know how to go about throwing big swim baits throughout the winter uh, on a budget. So we're really going to have some, some price things that we're going to talk about, some, some monetary deals we're going to discuss tonight. And, and man, swim baits can get out of hand. With, when it comes to the dollar bills. I mean, if you've ever looked into them, you know, this is one of my most prized possessions right here. And I've got a couple of these, got a few of these. This is an HPH gliding gizzard. This is a glide bait made by a gentleman named Randall Kirkpatrick in Atlanta, Georgia. This bait right here is one of the very best glide baits. It looks, it's very custom handmade. As you can tell, it looks as realistic of a shad representation as you'll ever find. Now a bait like this, it's handmade and hand tuned and all that good stuff. This bait's gonna cost you $150 for one bait, $150 for one stinking bait. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I've been fortunate enough to uh, be able to get my hands on a couple of these and they're not, well, like when I ordered some, it took me 11 months to get my bait after I ordered it. That's how far out he was. So very difficult to get your hands on, very, very expensive. And, and this is by no means the most expensive. We have the Roman made mothers that sell for about $420. Uh, there's some, several companies out there that sell three, four, five hundred dollars six hundred dollar $600 glide baits and hard swim baits. Some can even get up around 800 to 1,000. I don't mess with any of those. This is the most expensive one. Here's why I don't mess with any of those. None of those baits that are $400, $300 and up outperform this bait. This to me is as good of a glide bait as any bait you'll find on earth. I wanted this one because it's really, really custom. I really believed in it at the time. And this was years ago when I bought this. Uh, but I've never seen one that will outperform this and it's 150. That's stretching the budget as it goes. But if you want to go elite level top in and get one of the best handmade baits in the world, then this is it and you can do it for less than half of what a lot of other guys sell these oversized glide baits for. It's just some of the prices on these things are just, it's pure insanity. I would never, never spend $400, $500, $300 on a glide bait when I can buy one for $150 and this bait's better anyway. You know, so I'm just not going to, not going to put that money into it. You look at some of the, just the paint jobs and finishes on some of these $450 baits, they're nowhere close to that. Nowhere close to that right there. I mean, that's a real shed sitting in front of you. That's what it looks like. I mean, it's, it's as de detailed as any will ever get. Now, when we're talking specifically about really big glide baits, which is the best baits in the wintertime to me are glide baits because you got to go slow. As we've reached that time of year where your swim bait game needs to slow down. Your retrieves need to slow down. So I like to throw big soft plastic paddle tails and big glide baits because I can fish both of those extremely slow. If I'm looking for a really big glide bait, like a true trophy hunting, high-end paint job, custom, balls to the wall, let's go get it, let's fish like the big dogs do, but I wanna save as much money as possible. Uh, the River to Sea S Waver, the big one, the 200 series, is a pretty good option. This one's brand new, and y'all already know where this comes from, but this one's like 70 or $80. And this is from Six Cents Fishing. This is their tilapia pattern. They call this tilapia. I really like this color, but they've got a lot of colors. But the new Six Cents Draw is a nine inch glide bait. That's a really big bait, as you guys can see with it up against my hand right there. It's a big bait. It's a similar body style to an S waiver. But for 70 or $80 each, 18, John Hodson said $18.98 each. That is for the little bitty S waivers. That is not for the one this size. It is not that cheap for the ones this size. Uh, 
For about $70 or $80, this six inch draw, as far as a nine inch glide bait that has a custom paint job on it, you're not going to find a better value for your money than the new six cents draw on big glide baits, big glide baits, okay? Uh, you get into the, the, the competitors of this are the Hinkle, the uh, Depths 250, um, that HPH Gliding Gizzard, uh, Gancraft Jointed Claw. I mean, these are big top end, and all of those other baits that I'm naming are over a hundred dollars easily 150 200 250 300 some crazy prices on some of these baits that i'm naming uh, so for 70 or 80 dollars man this bait is as much bang for your buck as you can get that i found in the big giant glide baits and you know if you go order them you can get you a discount at sixcentsfishing.com and you use the code your lake for guide you'll get 10 percent off anything you want to order from six cents now if we want to step down to small glide baits i got one that's hush hush I mean, it's not hush hush, but I mean, nobody really, it's not talked about. It doesn't get discussed at all. Smash Tech Custom Baits actually makes this bait. Now, this was a bait that I personally begged Heath Taylor at Smash Tech to start making, to, to start, because you can order blanks of this for really cheap. Uh, this is a, a, a publicly sold blank. It's called an ES Flat is the name of the blank, and you can buy those blanks online for super cheap. Now, they'll be just clear blank plastic. There won't be any paint on them. But I begged Heath to start putting some paint jobs on these and carry these so that I could get them whenever I needed them. This is called the Smash Glide. It, it's a smaller, obviously a much, much smaller glide bait, as you can see. Much smaller than, say, the HPH. Much smaller. Much smaller. Much smaller than the, uh, the new draw from Six Cents. But this little dude right here, and this is called Goat Shed is the name of this color. This is my custom color. You can't really see it very well. It's a kind of a faded deal. It should, there's faded colors on here, but it has blue right here, a little bit of chartreuse, and a, and a tannish brownish top. That's what I asked for. That's my favorite. That's kind of my custom color that I asked Keith to do for me. We've worked together on that color for a while. But Goat Shed, Smash Glide, these, I think he sells these for 20 bucks. I mean, $20 in this glide bait, really as far as getting bites in action is as good as any glide bait I've ever fished. Now it's a smaller glide bait. It's not one of the big custom jobs, but this sucker right here gets you bit now. I mean, it gets a lot of bites. For a glide bait, it gets a lot, a lot of bites. So those are kind of my glide bait options. So you can kind of decide where you want to go. Now on the smaller ones, you can also go river to CS waiver is a good one on a budget. It's also about 20 bucks as well. So those are the glide bait options, top to bottom on price range, depending on how you want to do it. Now, I tried to give you an example of three different tiers of how to ball on a budget when it comes to glide baits right there. So let's talk about soft plastic swim baits because you can get into mess after mess on those as well. Let's go weedless first. Let's talk about big weedless swim baits. For me, and I've been throwing this bait for a long time, this, this was the original really big swim bait that was made weedless. They were all line throughs before this. Does, does Lake Fork Marina carry the Smash Tech glide bait? They sure do, they sure do. Um, this was the original weedless swim bait when it comes to big swim baits. It's the Smash Tech Convict right here. Another big giant bait, as you guys can see, this one I believe is eight inches long. A lot of baits like this on the market now. This was the original. It's priced as fair as any of them. It's as good a price as you'll find on any soft plastic swim bait that's this big and this good quality of a bait. Um, it's really a lot like the old, it was modeled after the Osprey, the Osprey Tournament Talon, which was a line through bait that he modeled this after, built a hook slot into it and, and you know plugged the nose and turned it into a weedless bait is what he did there. Great, great bait right there. Really love that for a big weedless. Now that's still gonna be pretty pricey. I mean, that bait's going to cost you, uh, I want to say it's for two of them, it's, it's like $20, $22, something like that. So you're looking at $10 per piece of plastic. So man, that's, that's a lot, right? Well, guys, you're just not going to avoid that with big soft plastic baits. You're not going to find big soft plastic baits that have any quality to them at all. They're going to be really cheaper than that. So if you want to throw those big baits, that's kind of what you got to pay. What I will tell you is there's other baits they get big bites that look more like a big swim bait. They act like a big swim bait, but the overall size isn't nearly as big. Here's a couple of them right here. These are weedless baits. 
This is called the poacher from Smash Tech. This is another bait that has a really fat body. It's not nearly as big as the convict, as you can see here. Not nearly as big, but it, act, it has a fat body. It acts like a swim bait. And what I mean by that is you can retrieve it very slowly and the tail kicks good at a very slow speed retrieve. It's got that thick profile and that slow uh, retrieve speed with a lot of tail kick. There you go. The other thing that I like that has another, it's a, it's an even smaller bait, but man, it has a good big swim bait type of action is the whale from six Sense fishing. This bait also can be retrieved very slowly with a lot of tail kick. It has the attitude of a big swim bait, even though it's a, it's a little bitty thing and it's not big at all. It's just your normal, like a Kitek or anything else. It's, the size is like a five inch, four and a half inch, five inch swim bait. It, but it acts and fishes and retrieves like a bigger bait. So this is a way that you can fish your bait slow in the wintertime and present the same type of presentation that the big swim baits, the $20 swim baits will present and still get some of those big bites, but you're not spending nearly as much money uh, when you go to these smaller ones. The other category is gonna be line throughs. Line throughs are phenomenal in the wintertime. Again, you can fish them so slow. You can just fish a line through so slow. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, the one line through that you need to own, it's by Smash Tech. It's as it's, it's good of a line through as you'll ever find. It's called the Smash Tech Felon. It looks like this right here. It's just a triangular shaped deal, but the tail kick and the action on this thing at slow speeds is the deal. It's the best one I've ever found. Um, it comes in a box with a treble hook equipped. You can see that's got a treble hook in it right there. This is a brand new one that's still in a box. Of course, it, it, it's been around forever in my boat, but. It, I found it in the bottom of an old swim bait bag and it's been sitting down there for I don't know how long because most of them I have aren't still in the box because they use them. But all you do is you just rig the line to your treble hook. You run your line, there's a little hole, little little tube in the nose of that bait and you run your line right through that hole. And then you take your hook and you get your hook point that isn't, you get the hook point that's in line with the eye. You don't want this hook point that's crossed with the eye. You want the hook point that's in line with the eye of the hook. You stick that one in there, right, right in the belly, right below the little anal fin deal there. And that's gonna allow your split ring to lay flat on the belly of your bait, which is gonna make it run true. So that's a line through swim bait. So those are kind of your options. Uh, Heath Taylor, I mean, there's lots of lots of line throughs out there. The convict is, I saw somebody ask, the smash that convict is made in a line through. And so it's basically just like the old Osprey Talon, but you don't have to pay near as much for the Smash Tech version as you do the Osprey version. Uh, he has many line throughs though. He has uh, the big gizzard chat is a line through option that he has. It's very, very good. Um, there's several, he, I, I can't even remember. I think he makes the poacher in a line through as well. So lots of baits and options over there. Smash Tech is just a swim bait company. He makes so many swim baits and they're so good. So lots of options over there for that. But those are your three categories. Those are my best budget picks for the baits in those categories. Of course, you can also, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can throw. He's got, Smash Tech's got a baby poacher. He's got a baby gizzard shed. You can throw all of these baits throughout the winter. These are all slow swimming baits that work really well. Now, another bait that's very effective in the wintertime, especially on a jig head, is going to be Divine Swim Bait from Six Sense Fishing. This is electric shad. I love this color. Very good color in all water colors. Uh, the electric shag color works good in all water conditions. Um, but Divine Swim Baits work really, really well fished on top hook jig heads. And that's another option. Somebody was asking for a website, please. The Smash Tech website is smashtechbaits.com. Smashtechbaits.com. The Sixth Sense website where I feature the draw and the whale and uh, the Divine Swim Baits, that's sixcentsfishing.com. On Sixth Sense Fishing, you can use the code Your Lake Fort Guide to get you a 10% discount on your orders. Smash tech, I don't have a code. Sorry about that. Anyways, I need to give me a little pause. Cheers, y'all. We talking big baits. We talking big bass and big baits. Let's get it. All right, let's talk about some of the gear you're going to need to throw these. Like, what gear do you, do you need to have to, to get the most out of these swim baits? How do we fish the glide bait? I see that as a question in the chat. We are going to get to that. That's going to be the last category we talk about after we talk about uh, the gear and the area that we're going to throw these baits in. So for the glide baits, I like a little bit different rod than I do for the weedless baits. Uh, so for the glide baits, I actually like the 
six cents lux rod and eight foot heavy with a moderate tip. Uh, what that's going to do is give me a little more rod length to cast that big bait even further, but it's going to give me a little softer tip for a treble hooked bait. So that's the rod I'm going to throw that on. It's the right one for the job for me. I'm going to throw that on 20 or 25 pound monofilament line, guys. One of the only times I use monofilament, I use it for some treble hook baits, some top waters, but treble hook baits, I really like monofilament line, the stretch of it. 20 or 25 pound to make sure that I got a good hold on those expensive baits, but it still have that stretch for when I have those hookups. See, I need that heavy action rod, that big rod to throw that bait because it weighs so much. But I want to have some type of shock absorption for a treble hook bait like that. So I use the moderate tip on my eight foot heavy and I use the, the monofilament line to give me a little bit of that stretch that you really need when you're throwing a big treble hook bait like that. Uh, reels, man, the best one I found is the Lose LFS, the Lose Super Duty LFSG. It's a, it's a light frame, small profile reel, but has a very deep spool. It also has oversized gears. That's going to give you the toughness that you need to cast those big heavy baits and for those giant hook sets and, and reeling in those giant bass that you're going to catch. You have everything you need right there in that reel. Loose Super Duty LFSG. Now, gear for the weedless baits is going to be a 7.8 heavy Divine Series or I think Millican actually makes a 7.9 heavy. And I know in the new series, they just came out with the Team 6 rods, there's a 7.9 heavy. These are all going to be very good big swim bait rods uh, for the weedless baits. Those rods that they're making 7.8, 7.9 heavy that Millican's helped them design, they're specifically for big baits. And Ben Millican's a dude that throws big baits a lot. Those are going to be the broomsticks, man. That's what you want for a big weedless swim bait because the way you're going to rig that bait up is going to be on a 10 out hook. Now, these 10 out hooks... Man, that is a heavy, heavy gauge hook. You need a giant rod to slam that thing home. You need a really stout rod. And that's what you have in those 7.8 and 7.9 heavy action rods. We're going to throw that on 20-pound fluorocarbon, and we're going to throw it on the same Super Duty LFSG reel from Lose. Let me give you guys a little tip and trick about the hooks on these big weedless swim baits like this. I'm going to use a 10 knot owner beast hook. It's going to come out of the package looking like this here, just a weightless EWG hook with a screw lock on it instead of the little crooked thing up at the eye of the hook. So that's what it looks like out of the package. You'll notice what we do right here is we take some, this is around the shank of this hook. This is storm lead strips. I use these storm lead strips right here and I'll put three or four of them. This one has four. I usually use three, but this one has four. Uh, on the belly of the hook, we just wrap them around those storm lead strips. You wrap them around like that. That is going to give you a little bit, just a little bit of weight to kill those, that big plastic bait and make it kind of run true because, man, you have to be so precise with how you rig a hook on these big weightless, weedless baits. There's so much plastic here and so little weight and they ride so high in the water column, they will want to turn on you as they swim if you get that hook crooked at all. But if you add these little storm strips, it makes it a lot easier to rig it up and get it to run true. And it really doesn't add to the sink rate of the bait hardly at all. So that's a little tip there. Now, on my line throughs, depending on the size of your line through, you may want to use those bigger rods like the previous two rods we mentioned. But in all honesty, with the Smash Tech Felon, I can get away throwing this on a 7.7 seven heavy, a 7.5 heavy, even a 7.3 heavy. I can get away with throwing this line through bait on those size of rods. I'm still going to use 20-pound fluorocarbon. Uh, you can use... The, the LFSG Super Duty reel that we talked about, but you can also use some of your normal reels, like a reel that I really like is the Team Lose Light Speed Spool. Uh, it's gonna be a much lighter reel. It's not gonna have the oversized gears, but the reality is this bait doesn't weigh as much as those others do. So you're not gonna necessarily need uh, the heavier gears to put up with. You're not gonna put as much trauma and much stress on the reel because you're not throwing as heavy of a bait. So you can kind of downsize your gear a little bit for those line threes, you don't have to go. You can throw them on the big stuff, you can if you want to, and if you'd rather, but you certainly don't have to. The other thing about like the big weedless baits, you know, those big glide baits, those big hard baits, they're heavy, heavy, heavy. And, and so you need that super duty reel and that big rod for that. And then the big weedless baits, a lot of times we're throwing that, we're catching giant bass on it and we're throwing it in heavy cover, grass, pads, wood, whatever, we're throwing it, it's weedless, we throw it wherever. And so you need that oversized rod with those oversized gears and handles. You need that oversized, uh, that really strong rod to handle that fish and get it out of that heavy cover and control it uh, 
Whereas with the line through, most of the time when you're throwing a line through, you're fishing it more open water. So you really don't have to have quite the gear with the line through as far as the size of your rod and your reel and strength of that stuff. That's kind of all the gear. Areas that we're going to throw big baits in this time of year. I'm going to throw big, basically, I'm going to throw big baits in areas where I'm seeing big bait in the fall, winter, spring, whatever have you. Now, right now in the fall, it can be in the back of a creek. That's my favorite place to throw big baits is in the back of a creek, especially if I have vegetation. I lean on floating glide baits and big weedless baits this time of year in the backs of creeks around vegetation. But as we transition, which we kind of are already starting to transition, the water temps have gotten down close to the 60 degree mark. As they get down there and those fish start moving back out to, you know, bridge pilings and main lake points and just main lake timber, suspending in main lake timber, things like this. Okay, now your line throughs and your slow sinking glide baits become more of a player for you as that begins to happen. Your swim baits on a jig head like the Divine swim bait or something like that becomes more of a player out there. Uh, so the types of areas that I'm, I'm fishing throughout the fall, shallow, back creek. As soon as I'm seeing big bait in the back creek, I'm throwing big swim baits around grass and all that good stuff. From now going forward, we're going to start transition to bridge, bridge aprons, bridge pilings. We're going to transition to main lake points and main lake timber. Those are the types of areas that we're going to throw these baits in. As we get into spring, it'll become a shallow point driven deal. And boy, y'all know how that goes. Uh, we can talk about that again when the spring comes around. But those are the types of areas that we're looking at right now for big swim baits and through and through the winter. All right, retrieves. Let's talk retrieves for a minute because that can be a complex deal in and of itself, depending on which bait you're throwing. Um, for the for the line throughs and the big weedless swim baits, there's not honestly a whole heck of a lot to it. It's just really you want to go as slow as you can while keeping that tail kicking. What I will tell you is there's a cadence, there's a rhythm to how you turn that handle, it's gonna be right. And you have to search and find that. When you get a bite, you really need to focus on how you are turning that handle. Because there is a certain rhythm and cadence day to day that's gonna make those fish, instead of just follow it, it's gonna make you make them trigger and eat that bait. And once you find that rhythm, boy, you can really start catching them on it. So that's really the only thing. The one tip I would tell you about throwing a, a weedless bait, or even a line through, but a weedless bait especially, is point the rod where the line comes straight out of the rod tip. And what I mean is here's your rod tip and that line goes straight out. Don't have your rod tip down here where your line's going like this. Don't have your rod tip up high where your line's going like this or to the side where it's going like that. You want that line coming, I mean, coming literally straight out of your rod. I shouldn't have done that on the live stream. You want that line coming straight out of the tip of your rod. You want to point your rod right down the line. What that does is it applies direct pressure to the bait. And it's going to make it reel through anything you come through that much better because it's not going to load, bend that rod at all. It's not going to load up on the grass, on the lily pad stems, on the wood. It's going to make it reel right through it. And it's going to make your bait that much more effective, even in denser, heavier cover. So try that tip right there. You're also going to feel the bite immediately. You're going to feel that you're going to, when you go to set the hook, you're going to put immediate pressure on the fish and get that much better of a hook set as well. So try that tip for pointing right at it like that. Now, the glide bait is where the retrieve gets complicated. <laughs> There's a, a lot to retrieving a glide bait. There's different ways you can retrieve a glide bait. When you just throw a glide bait and you retrieve it, it swims in an S-curve like this here. And what happens is fish get behind it and kind of follow it. And a lot of times they'll just follow and follow and follow. And you have to do something to that bait to make that fish go ahead and commit and bite it. My favorite retrieve on a glide bait is to point, point the rod down and slow reel, real slow. I'll reel it five to seven or eight spins of the reel, and then I'll twitch, twitch. And it's pretty hard twitch, it's pop, pop. That glide bait's gonna be reeling along five or six, seven, eight cranks. We're gonna hit it, it's gonna go poof, poof. And when it does that, toom, toom, that's when they're gonna bite it because they're behind it following it, and you go toom, toom, and it gets in their face, and, and they almost, you force them into a decision where it's like, that fish either has to go ahead and eat that bait or it has to turn and run away. And if it turns and runs away, it wasn't gonna bite anyway. So you're not losing anything by forcing that fish into that decision. But you wanna hit that twitch, twitch on that retrieve. Just slow reel, five, six, eight cranks, whatever. Boom, boom. Make that fish make a decision when that bait does that double pump to the side. Man, that, that's my favorite way to fish a glide bait. Now, if you see activity on the surface and fish are really getting after it, you can see shad skipping on the surface. A really effective way to fish a glide bait is almost like fishing it like a Zara spook, but you're doing it under the water. 
uh, you can take your glide bait rod and just pop, 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 pop. And just pop that slack, and that glide bait's going to go boom, 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 under the water all the way back to the boat. And when fish are really actively chasing and feeding, that is a fantastic way. Like, especially as we get into springtime and they get them shallow points, you can take that glide bait and do that, and you can catch some giants and a bunch of them doing that with a glide bait. Uh, in the fall, you really kind of need to see that surface activity. I need to see that surface activity for me to want to do that retrieve. Otherwise, I feel like I'm not going to get bites because that's just too aggressive of a, a retrieve for the fish as the bite is starting to slow down. As the temperatures are cooling off, those fish aren't that aggressive it, 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 most of the time until you see the evidence of them chasing bait on the surface. Hopefully, I said that right and made sense. The other thing that a lot of guys do with a glide bait, and I haven't had much success doing this, but I've heard other guys talk about it and say that it works for them, is they get a slow retrieve going, and then they'll pump the reel. So basically you'll, and then the bait will do that. So you just kind of slow wind it for several cranks, and then fast wind it for two or three or four cranks. So bait just goes slow, and it shoots up like that, and that gets that fish. Again, what it does is it's kind of a start-stop thing, like we talked about with Twitch Twitch earlier, and what it does, it gets that fish behind that bait, and when you speed it up, that fish speeds up, and then all of a sudden you stop, and that bait just kind of stops, and that fish just runs into it. Same principle. That fish either got to open his mouth and eat it, or he's got to turn and run away. And if he runs away, he wouldn't go by anyway, like we said earlier. So it's kind of a similar principle, just a different way of doing it. That presentation hasn't worked as well for me. I've heard other guys say that it does. I've tried it a little bit. Probably haven't tried it enough because I have so much confidence in the slow, real twitch, twitch retrieve that I referred to you guys earlier. That's my personal favorite way to fish a glide bait. But really, man, a glide bait, there's not really a wrong way to fish it. They're so realistic looking. You can let the fish look at it a long time. You want to get them following it. Then you want to give them sudden changes and try to make them, you know, force them into a commitment one way or the other. That's kind of the principles of fishing a glide bait. So hopefully all this stuff has helped you guys. Hopefully I did a good job. I'm doing it live. I don't like doing these live. I like to really get all the details in there on the instructional videos. So hopefully I nailed most of the topics that we needed to discuss with glide baits tonight and big swim baits in general and how to ball on a budget, baby. You know, you got to be balling on a budget every once in a while in this game. I hear you. Everything's so expensive these days. It's crazy. Uh, so y'all let me know in the comments, did we help? Hopefully we helped. Or, or if we didn't help, there's something that we missed out on. Let me know. Right now, if you guys have had questions tonight, go ahead and ask the questions now. And I would love to answer as many as I can. I see we got one right here from Brad Lamar. It says, best hook? For the whale, the whale swim bait from Six Inch Fishing. That's this one right here. I like to throw a 5 aught owner flashy swimmer or a 5 aught uh, just owner beast belly weighted hook. <laughs> Cody May says best thing to help him is the mullet. It's back there. It's back there doing his thing. It's, it's kind of got a mind of its own these days. It does whatever it does, you know. It's like a little duck tail coming out of my hat. The Arashi Glide is not bad. 200 size for $39. That's a very good deal. I have not had any experience with the Arashi Glide. Storm Arashi Glide, I know of it, but I have not tried it. John Hodson, thank you for that. Have I ever fished a Huddleston on Fork and Winter? Yes. They don't... A Huddleston is one of the best winter swim baits you could ever throw. It's a line-through swim bait. Most of the guys are throwing line-throughs. Some of them come with harnesses and all that, but... Uh, Huddleston trout swim baits, and that you don't have to buy it. it. can come in different shiner colors and whatever. It doesn't have to look like a trout. But, you know, they would bite a Huddleston on other lakes around here that I threw them at. When I was throwing swim baits all the time, they would bite a Huddleston on Monticello. They'd bite it on Welsh. Uh, they would bite it on Athens. They just won't. They didn't bite the Huddleston as good on Fork as they did some of the other baits. It just, I don't know why something about that kick on the Huddleston just didn't really suit the Lake Fork bass. Huddleston's a great bait, though. It's an expensive bait. It's not a budget-friendly one. You know, funny thing, about, cool story about a Huddleston. It was back in somewhere between, like, 2012 and 2014. I don't remember what year it was. But the biggest fish caught in the state of Texas for the entire year was caught in wintertime on a Huddleston, nine inch Huddleston trout line through swim bait. And it was caught of all places in Tyler State Park. Tyler State Park. 
little tiny, tiny, tiny lake. But key factor, they dump trout in there every winter. And some guy caught like a 15-pounder out of there. It was the biggest fish caught in the state that year. Yeah. Yep. Get six cents to bring back the 140 flow glider. Hey, bud, where did I put it? Go get the smash glide. It's the exact same bait. It's the ES flat. Smash glide from Smash Tech, $20. Go get you one. Same deal. Can't, can't go without saying this tonight. It is the United States Marine Corps' 246th birthday. Uh, so I definitely do want to take time to say a huge thank you, huge thank you to everybody that I served with, everybody that served before me, and everybody that continues to serve after me. Uh, the Marine Corps is a unique fraternity and brotherhood, even over other branches of service. I, I would love to try to sit here and explain it to you guys and tell y'all some stories, but the reality is, as much as I love y'all, you will never, ever, ever understand. Nobody will ever understand what it means to be a Marine and what we were a part of. It's truly, truly the most special thing that I've ever done and accomplished in my life is just being part of that group. When you really reflect on it and think about everything, it's, it's the best thing I've ever done. It's, it's the biggest, most important thing I've ever done. It's the best thing I've ever done was being part of that gun club, being part of that brotherhood. And uh, I love everybody that I served with, e even though I don't like some of them very much. <laughs> I love them all. And uh, it, it's a different breed, and it makes you a different person. It changes you forever. And uh, happy birthday to every one of my brothers out there from the United States Marine Corps, 246. And we just getting started being the finest fighting force in the world, baby. Just, just, just getting started. Let's go. I think that deserves a by God cheers and a little bit of brown water. Get that brown in your cup. Hold it up. Drink it down, Marines. Let's go. Hoorah. I'm going to get to see one of my Marine Corps brothers tomorrow. Blake McGee from 22 Kill. We're working a veterans event, a veterans benefit event down at the Texas Freshwater Fishery Center. Gary Klein's going to be there. Kelly Jordan's going to be there. I'll be there. Sounds weird to say my name with theirs, but yeah, I'll be there. Uh, just be down there talking fish and hanging out, raising some funds and, and doing some things for veterans uh, to get them outdoors and stuff like that. So, and Blake McGee is going to be there from 22 Kills. So if you guys are available tomorrow morning from 9 a.m. to noon, please come to Athens, Texas, and hang out with us at the Fishery Center. It's going to be a great event. What live unit do I run on my boat? Lawrence Active Target. And I love it. It caught, I mean, it caught a, yesterday afternoon at the end of the trip, it caught a seven and a half pounder that there's no way, no way that I would be able to catch that fish without that Lawrence Active Target. That's what it does. It puts fish in your boat that you wouldn't catch without it. Bonus fish, baby. That's right. Bonus fish. Well, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I've got a big trip coming up. I'm actually headed down tomorrow. As soon as I get done working that event, I'm headed down to Frank Talley's place. And me and Frank Talley from the Bassmaster Elite Series are going to fish together on Friday and film for you guys. And then Saturday, I have the great honor and privilege to participate in the Josh Bingham Memorial Tournament that's going on Saturday on Lake Belton, Texas. Uh, never been there. Never seen it. Probably going to get my butt kicked in that tournament. But I'm fishing Lake Belton. And I've got Justin Royal as my tournament partner Saturday, which is a pretty big deal in and of itself. If you don't know, Justin Royal has a great YouTube fishing page. Six, he's a six cents brother. We're on the same pro staff at six cents. And he lives down in central Texas in the Austin area. So he's going to come up fish Belton with me on Saturday. And, and I just don't know anything about that lake. So I have no idea how good or bad the fishing will be on Belton. Uh, but it's going to be a great weekend. I'm going to get to see my buddy, Frank Talley. Tomorrow's his birthday. So I'm looking forward to seeing him tomorrow night when we get there. And, uh, it's going to be a good weekend, man. You guys, hopefully the content comes out good and you guys will enjoy the content over the next few weeks. So 
And we've got another trip planned coming up here in December that I ain't going to disclose to anybody till it's time. We're going someplace pretty special. Uh, and we're going to try to do some big things on that trip as well in December. So we're going to have some good content. Hopefully everything goes right. Lord Will and Creek don't rise. We'll have some really fun content over the winter, man. Thank you guys so much for everything. Um, I just can't ever say it enough. Like I said, the support from Monday's video and all the the comments of people that have been through similar situations is just unbelievable. Like I said, there's no words, no words for what that means to me and what it says about you guys and this, this group that we have in this world of social media where everybody wants to be negative in comments and hate in comments and there's there's none of that. There's only positivity and love in those comments and we just we don't have the biggest audience. By God, we got the best by a long shot. And I'm very, very proud just to be a part of you guys' crowds. So thank y'all very much for being for being who you are. And we'll see you next time. Right here on your Lake Fort God.